Well, welcome to the Arizona Mining Review and eVideo magazine of the Arizona Geological Survey now at the University of Arizona. It's August 28, 2017, and this, our 40th episode, follows a one-year hiatus. Our first episode would broadca was broadcast in January of 2013. I'm your host, Mike Conway. Our guest today, uh, Rita, Rita Zubas, Hello. president of the Kirkland Mining Company, and Al Birch, project manager. Uh, welcome to the Thank show. You. Thank you. And Kirkland Mine, the Kirkland Mine Quarry is situated in central Arizona near the small community of Kirkland. And the quarries has a nearly 100 year history, as I understand it, that included providing dimension stone for the Arizona State Capitol yes. and kitty litter, which is a kind of a wide range of, of uh, materials. And I understand you guys are going to start up a new mine, mining Poslin there. And before we get into the details of that, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, Arita? Sure. Um, well, my family um, came across this deposit back in 1989 when it was the Kitty Litter Mine. And um, at that time, mm -hmm. they were uh, working with um, getting um, some help for a bagging operation that they needed. And it ended up being that, you know, they had the partners in the Kitty Litter Mine went their separate ways. And so my dad just had done some research on it and found something really special about it and just kind of had this feeling like this is something really incredible. And, and you know, I'll t I think I want to take over the claims and buy the claims. And so he did. And it's been in the family for 30 years now. And we just recently, back in... 2011 decided that it was time to kind of figure out really what is this and what's what what can it do and that's when we started really getting into the research and development and figured out that we had a high quality natural puzzle on very good and al you're his, you have long history of mining in the area um in some way shape or form yeah i'm a uh, consulting geologist now but i spent uh, about uh, 30 years with the U.S. Bureau of Land Management as a geologist, and before that in exploration. So I've been around mining for years and years. Very good. Well, thank you for that introduction. And let's move on to the Kirkland Mining property. And I think the first thing you're going to have to do is explain the word Poslin, because outside the geoscience community, that probably doesn't have a lot of significance or meaning. So what is it, and what is it used for? Well, you know, Pozzolans have not, they're making a comeback. They were something very special back in the 30s. Um, they were being used as, you know, in concrete and mm -hmm. cement. A lot of our dams are built with natural Pozzolans. But what happened was that the government, fly ash, came along. And the fly ash is an artificial Pozzolan, and it comes from coal mining and um, power plants type of stuff. So what... What happened was they were like, well, what are we going to do with this? This is filling up our landfills, and right. we need to do something. And they figured out that it could be used and mixed with uh, Portland cement. And so Pozzolans got kind of kicked out because they were a little more expensive than, you know, getting something for free. So sure. that's um, where it was. And now that they're, the industry has changed 80 years later, um, natural Pozzolans are making a comeback. And... You know, people are looking at it again because of its environmental benefits and its economic benefits, but mainly the environmental benefits of it can do a lot of really special things in areas like water filtration, um, help rebuild our infrastructure in cement and concrete, you can create a super concrete um, as an aggregate, I mean as an, ad, uh, sorry, as a... Um, soil amendments for mm -hmm. ag agricultural and horticultural purposes. So okay. there's a lot of, um, you know, really special purposes for this. But we decided to go into developing the cement and concrete part, especially because what's happening in our country as far as infrastructure goes, sure. there's a lot of rebuilding that needs to be happening. And this is a really special material for that. Right. So I gather Poslin is a really an excellent additive. It adds life adds many years of life to the concrete that's been that's being being produced. Mm -hmm. Yes, <clears throat> yes, it does. Um, the pozzolans come in, in many natural pozzolans come in very many forms: diatomite, diatomaceous mm -hmm. right. earth, uh, opaline, opaline shirts, things like that. But tough is uh, uh, 
pernicious tough is, is probably the one that most people are looking at right now. Mm -hmm. And it is the, the amount of amorphous component in those tufts that really give it the, the characteristics sure. to make it a cementitious material when water is added. Right. And when it is mixed with cement, it essentially enhances the concrete by um, making the curing time for concrete slower, right. exactly. which, which means that the concrete doesn't crack. It also uh, combats against alkali silica reactivity. It, it essentially enhances the concrete dramatically. And so much so, it's been used since Roman times. Mm -hmm. And many of the structures even in Rome that stand today are there because they used pozzolan and not the kind of cement and concrete. So we're looking at today. lifespan of 2,000 years for concrete, which is substantially better than we probably get today. We, we hope so. <laughs> we absolutely hope so. so. <laughs> and what is your property like? You've got this, this place up in Kirkland. It's been a mine quarry for over 100 years. And how big a footprint do you guys have up there? 320 acres. And uh, the mining plan is based on 76 of those acres. And those 76 acres is really where the mining always has been in the okay. last hundred years. So there's been about eight different types of mining operations since, you know, from that hundred years back. And our focus was really um, to keep the landscape, you know, sure. and also though just focus on where, you know, the mining used to be and has always been. So when we went into exploration, we really felt that we needed to just confirm and qualify the consistency and the quality of the deposit within that area. Mm -hmm. um, we really stuck to drilling 10 holes and going down so that we could understand that, it, again, the consistency was there sure. um, and doing our testing and research on that because we didn't feel that it was necessary for us to, you know, mine yeah, this. Right. And, you know, that's a, that's a lot of material. And we're talking about a 40-year mining plan that in this area has... 40 a, years. Yeah, it's so kind of, what kind of productivity year to year are you looking at over that 40 year span? Well, the, it's hard to answer sure. that question at this point only because natural pozzolans are making a comeback. So it's not like you can go and pull from a market study that's already right. been existing. This is literally, you're recreating and redeveloping an infancy market here. And so understanding how it's going to work with the fly ash market, how it's going to, what percentage of that market is it going to capture, um, what's the supply and demand going to be right. in the first five to ten years to the first, you know, going into 40 years in the next generation. So those are all studies that are being completed right now, and we're okay. really trying to get a clear understanding by talking to industry experts and leaders in the concrete and cement industry, different, you know, and, and working with them to understand what, what do those numbers look like? But we feel that at maximum production, we're looking at 500,000 tons per year, which if you're considering... Sounds like a, a lot. Well, it sounds like a lot, but you have to realize <clears throat> that a, a regular aggregate quarry does sure. 2 million tons a year. Mm -hmm. You know, so on that scale, it's a very small uh, operation yeah. compared to sand and gravel. Op you know, there's, sure. it's a very uh, minimal type of situation as far as if you look at other quarries out there. And is your market strictly here in Arizona? Are you going to be shipping no. nationally, worldwide? No, we're focused on the western western, western markets. Okay. Yeah. Right. Very good. Mm -hmm. Wow. So what else am I, we're not talking about that we should be chatting about right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to let everyone know that this is a, a tough deposit. It's a late Miocene mm -hmm. tough. It is officially a crystal lithic tuff, and a yeah. couple of examples are here on the table. You can see that the color is uh, grayish or, or even white in, in many places, and the, and the color can make a difference sure. when this is crushed down eventually and mixed with cement mm -hmm. to enhance the concrete. It has a large component of pumiceous class as well as a pumiceous matrix. And it is that amorphous component that is very, very critical to a natural pose. Right. It will be mined within that 76-acre footprint, primarily with, with simple equipment, uh, bulldozers, excavators. And at the mine site, it will be taken to a crusher and crunched to a 2-inch minus mm -hmm. material. Mm -hmm. And that 2-inch minus material then will be sold into the market. Sure. 
eventually, uh, and to some of the buyers, those buyers will, will mill that down eventually to 10 microns oh at some other place sure. um, um, where their plants are located. And it is that 10 micron minus material that is then used and mixed directly with cement or can be used sure. and mixed in with concrete. Very good. Yeah, it's important to understand because there's different types of natroposlone and they are, there's different levels that some are processed, you know, to a finer grind than others. It's, it, it really is kind of goes with the criteria of who the end user is and, and those things being tested through research and development. So okay. where ours may have to be grinded down to a 10 micron, somebody else might have to use a water agent and sure. grind down to a 15 micron or what, you know, it, it really is specific to the deposit. Right. And so that's, that's something to understand. Well, let, let me finish up by asking a little bit, where are you at with your permitting? When do you hope to be able to finalize that? Because I know the, the mine has been permitted in the past and you're moving forward on that. What's your hope and when do you hope to be in production at this point? Well, we just began the NEPA process, and which is, sure. you know, can be anywhere from a year to an 18 month process. Um, we're in the beginning of the NEPA process right now and we're getting ready to end the scoping period so we will be um, identifying you know what the concerns are, sure. uh, what we need to address in studies. So we're looking at a water study, a traffic impact analysis okay. study, uh, socioeconomic study. You know there's a number of studies that have to be completed in the next uh, you know nine months so that we can get back answers and understand you know, the impacts and come mm -hmm. up with best practices so that we can run a very smooth and clean and you know, what I like to call a well-oiled machine operation. And sure. we think it's going to be incredibly special and we're, we're looking forward to it. Our hope is that we will get through the process in the next you know, uh, year to 18 months and that's our goal. Okay. And we're gonna be doing everything in, within our our, what, what we're supposed to do to get that done. Very good. Mm -hmm. Well, well, thank you for joining us on the Arizona thank Mining Review. And good us. luck with the, the mine and good luck with the permitting process. Thank you so right. much. We thank appreciate you. the time. Well, I appreciate it.